Whoa. Another mod? Oh my god, am I losing my mind? Anyways, this is Nightmare House 2. This is the, I'm not gonna spoil it, sequel to Nightmare House 1, which was released back in 2005. It was a pretty short map, and I actually did play it with a friend back in the day, and I thought it was pretty cool. I mean, it used very basic Half-Life uh, 2 assets initially, and as time went on, around 2007, Nightmare House 2 started to get developed, and then it released in 2010. This is the 2015 current updated version of the game. I have played this in the past, a few times, and I still think it holds up pretty well. I'm gonna spoil it right now, I don't really get scared by stuff, as you guys probably can already tell. But I do love the aesthetic of this game, and it has a lot of nostalgia to me. It is fairly short as well, it's maybe about an hour and a half tops, probably. It's a good excuse for me to stop worrying about COVID after I've recovered finally. So, obviously my voice still isn't 100% up to snuff yet. It's still getting there, that does take a while. But this was released, I believe, by the main developer was called Hen... Uh, Matholski? I'm gonna assume that's how you say his name. Um, it was a pretty big project, and I actually remember this being a big project as well, because I think initially when I played this, like, the first time back in, like, 2010 or something, it didn't feel as, like, polished, but as times went on, there's been a lot more attention to detail, there's been bug fixes, you know, stuff like that. That always kind of happens with uh, mods, and there's quite a bit of, like, community outreach as far as I can tell with people they got to go do on all, like, the programming and stuff. So it's quite an impressive piece of work, um, and I, I still think it holds up pretty well as a mod. Um, I will be doing more mods, because I just love them. They're quick, short little snippets of videos I can do between big projects and stuff, so I really enjoy doing these. And of course, it's, you know, free. There's... the only thing you really have to have is Source SDK 2013. I'm gonna spoil this right now, as well. This mod may take like 10 minutes to download, but you're gonna spend like an hour downloading Source SDK. Trust me. Um, and there is actually a couple fixes that you can do to this um, that I have done. Um, one of them is the fact that Steam Pipe Update broke this pretty hard when it first came out. And, I mean, unlike a lot of things, it's pretty hard to fix. Um, so, you can go on, you know, your Steam profile, go on your tool setting, download Source SDK Multiplayer 2013, and I'll actually put a link to the fix I found that takes care of a lot of the loading and saving issues because it'll cause a ton of stuttering even on my current PC which by the way blows the shit out of the water so yeah if you want to do that it's a really simple file replacement um, it doesn't take more than two seconds it will take about an hour and a half to download both source SDK and the multiplayer as well so I don't know if you can play this in multiplayer mode I've never done it I've just played it with friends here and there and like Skype and shit so, but I have played it recently twice, and I still think it holds up really well, so let's go ahead and jump into this shit. So, if you really, really want to, you can start at any point in the game. This is a nice little feature if you really just want to get past everything or do a specific part. And I'll put out as much trivia as I know about this as we keep going to. So, yeah, here we go, man. Mmm. Apparently nobody in these games knows how to drive. That's pretty accurate. So, this is the prologue, of course, and I'm gonna keep this as one video. Everything's gonna be one video, pretty much, for this, for the entire thing. Now, as you can see, we have 88 health, we've crashed our truck, we're a pretty bad driver, apparently. There is a pretty basic story to this, which I don't think is too bad. Now, I always say I'm a huge fan of Backwood Horror. It's one of my just favorite genres of all time. Now, initially, Nightmare House 1 was what we're playing right now, except very primitive. So first things first, don't throw your shit at me, it's not gonna bug me. Go ahead and pick up this axe. Um, this is the main melee weapon of this. It's really weird coming off of playing Afraid of Monsters and everything and having just one solid melee weapon. So, yeah, there's a lot of jump scares in this. I'm just gonna spoil it right now. I, I don't jump scare easy at all. Unless it's real life and someone just startles the shit out of me, then that's a little bit different. 
But, um, I've played this twice in the past few days, and I really still think it holds up. Now, we can also get a handgun off of this corpse. And if you're probably thinking, man, this seems really lazy, it's just a bunch of reused Half-Life 2 assets. Well, only the beginning introduction area does this. The rest is actually pretty much mainly brand new assets. And it's pretty impressive, and you'll see what I'm talking about as we get going into this, so... Anyways, I wouldn't call this a very difficult mod. I actually have went through this twice now, and not died a single time. Um, I don't really think you need to play this on any higher difficulty than normal. I don't think it really makes a difference. Now, there's also quite a few different things you can do. Um, there's two main endings. Um, one of them... Oh, hi, how's it going? You should have stayed in your fucking tub, man. Taking a shit over there, it's not my problem. Don't take it out on me. Anyways. Also, epilepsy warning, of course, this game has a ton of flashing lights and shit. Um, so, be very careful if you are epileptic. Also, those little band-aids, those are medkit forms in this. There's also standard medkits as well. Now, I always say, I don't get scared easy, but the atmosphere in this is fucking top-notch, man. I, I can't stress to you enough how this is genuinely... It's, it's so cliche, and I think G-Man has said a pretty good point. This game has like zero original bones in its body for the most part, and I'm kind of okay with that if I'm honest, because I think it really does feel like a love letter to all these classic like things it's inspired from at the time. Um, I can pretty much name them on the top of my hand. There's The Ring, The Grudge, we've also got, you know, good old-fashioned, you know, Japanese horror in general. I can also cite that there's quite a lot of fear influence in this. I mean, that's just me, maybe. Now, I have played um, Under Hell, but I only played a certain version of it. And there's Emily, by the way. She's, uh, well, she's got some problems. That's all there is to it, really. Oh, no. Someone didn't plaster this properly. That sounds like a job you want to get the receipt of the contractors from, man. Um... But yeah, there's there's quite a few horror influences in this. I get a lot of Doom 3 as well here and there. Fear obviously comes to mind. And I have played, like I was just going to say, Under Hell. Um, I think they were collaborated on by the same people. Sup. That's not cool. Whereas, by the way, you have to do a lot of the triggered sequences to make things work, which is a little fun in my opinion. If you're one of those people that's like, oh, I'll just look away from it. No, you can't. You gotta do some of it on your own, man. You gotta be a man. Man up. So, the only thing I wish that they would have changed for this prologue section is it's basically just Nightmare House 1. And I feel like they should have used some new assets. But that's just me. So anyways, with handguns and stuff, actually all weapons in this mod, if you hold down your right-click button, you'll see that the uh, crosshairs pop up. I'm not really sure why that is. Um... I guess it's to add horror immersion or something. I don't know, man. It doesn't really phase me too much. Um, this is also one of the few times in the entire mod where you need a fucking key. So it's very odd that you actually need to do that. But, um, and it also controls very similar to uh, the mechanics from Under Hell if you've played that. Like I said, I haven't played the full version of it. Um, the one I played was actually just like a very basic one. I think they only had the main action sequence and the uh, the house section and that was it. It was pretty short, but that was so long ago, man. I might replay that, but I know it's like just hours long, which is both good and bad in my opinion. This is about the right length to me for a horror mod, or any mod in general. I don't want something to outstay its welcome because after a while you just get so... Pick up your shit and stop throwing it at me. Yeah, I must be a vampire as well, because I don't have a reflection. So there's also these big green med kits. These are pretty common as well. You're never really going to be so low on ammo that you can't shoot enemies. Um, obviously in the beginning, this is a pretty uh, scripted sequence where it's like, Alright, you got a bunch of guns, don't worry about it. Later on here in the mod, as it picks up in pace, we're going to have um, quite a little bit of a reduction in our arsenal here. But, um, I still think it holds up. Like I said, I... I can't stress it enough. I think it's just the right length. It's not too short, not too long. It's got pretty much everything you're going to expect under the sun. Like that. So, I don't know. I don't really get scared, but hey, I'm dead serious. If you're playing this on your own, you know, 
this is a very atmospherically well-made mod, and I also absolutely love the soundtrack, man. There's something just incredible about it. Oh, hey, how's it going? There's no head crabs in this, which is probably for the better. I mean, it would be kind of weird if there was just randomly head crabs in, like, this very quote-unquote realistic environment. But all this does have some flavor in the story, which I kind of think is not the greatest, I'm not gonna lie. Um, I don't think the story is very good for this. Uh, I don't want to spoil it because it's so basic, but, uh, yeah, trust me, it's, it's not that great. So, one thing that also throws me off about this mod is your revolver is set to, like, 3, and in vanilla Half-Life, uh, at least Half-Life 2 and 1, your shotgun is always set to 3, and revolver is set to, like, the pistol slot, which is a bit weird in my opinion. But it's tolerable. I can't complain. Also, I'd like to point out, whoever the fuck lived here really was, you know, prepping for a small war, which is, you know, that's America, I guess, in a nutshell. So, I don't know, I really quite like the uh, environmental details. I wish the mod was longer, if I'm honest, and I wish there was a little bit less, you know, scripting. But it's still very solid, I mean, the original Nightmare House was a classic. I mean, I have played it a long time ago. It's extremely short. It's actually shorter than this portion right here, and we're almost at the end of this first level, so... I don't know. First things first, do not try to keep fighting all these zombies. They will spawn infinitely, and you will have a very bad time. Also, your sprint, I haven't even mentioned this, does run out, so be cautious of that. I don't know, she smiled at us and said, Nope. You can't escape from Nightmare House, man. You just can't. Nightmare House escapes from you. So, that's the prologue section. It's pretty, uh, nostalgic to the original mod itself. I quite like it. Obviously, this loads up straight away, so you don't have to fiddle-faddle with anything. This is probably just a leftover thing from the developers, if I'm pretty sure. But man, if that sets the bar, this is the, uh, the bar for all horror mods, in my opinion, though. It's really high. Not just that portion, but the portions after. There's a lot of actually really well-made stuff. Mm-hmm. How meta. Even a familiar nightmare. Yeah. Wake up. It's time for the real nightmare to begin. Oh, shit. So, yeah. Like I said, it starts up right after the prologue, and we end up in a very not safe looking place. So, I'll see you guys in the next one.